talk about Game of Thrones. I know people, before you say anything, I know, I get it. I am incredibly, incredibly, incredibly late on this. But as a wise wizard once told me a long, long time ago, a wizard is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Granted, it's probably blasphemy for me to even mention Gandalf in a review about Game of Thrones, but here we are, folks. So I'm going to level with you guys. A few weeks ago, I had never seen a single episode of Game of Thrones. I had heard a lot about it. Almost everybody I know had been trying to put me on it for years. But then I had a friend essentially threaten to come kill me in my sleep if I didn't watch the show. So I was like, okay, fine. Fuck it. I'm going to put the show on and I'm going to watch season one just to make sure I feel how I feel. And after watching season one, I gotta say, not only am I interested to see seasons two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eventually eight when it comes out next year, I'm also very interested to talk about it because holy shit, I said that a lot while I was watching the show. Holy shit. That means that there's a lot to talk about. It's a show about magic and about dragons and about warriors and about incest, among other things. It takes place in this big, huge-ass land, probably like Middle Earth for Lord of the Rings, and there are seven kingdoms. Although most of the season focuses on two of them, pretty much. That doesn't mean that the other five aren't out there in some way, shape, or form. I'm assuming the other seasons touch on the other kingdoms. Winterfell is where I see most of the likable characters, at least for me. Winterfell is led by the Starks, and I would say after season one, I'm probably an honorary member of House Stark. King's Landing is basically like the kingdom of all of the seven kingdoms. It's where the main king lives, it's where the main king's bitch lives and everything else, it's where the right hand of the king lives. And the season essentially ends with the Starks and the Lannisters about to go to war, so Winterfell versus King's Landing. Obviously, that's the main crux of the story, so that's where we have to start. Like I said, I do like or at least enjoy the characters from most of the Starks. I mean, you got Big Mama Stark, I can't remember her actual name, I only really knew her as the big-eyed villain from 24 Live Another Day. She also got Sean Bean as Ned Stark, aka the King of Winterfell, he was awesome, I love him. I think he has like five kids, there's Arya Stark, there's Sansa Stark, there's Brant Stark, and then there's Robert Stark. And then there's Jon Snow. And Jon Snow is an awesome character. He's not even technically a Stark because he's a bastard. And bastards in this kingdom are basically looked down upon as lower class people. Or at least they have to walk through life with a black cloud or a black mark on them for whatever reason. Jon Snow, yeah, he's a member of the Stark's family because he is Ned Stark's son. Not born of Mrs. Stark. He was born from another relationship that took place 17 plus years before the season even takes place. But I would say out of all the Starks, my favorite Starks are Ned Stark, Jon Snow, and then Arya Stark. Arya Stark, because of the events that take place in season one where she has to go live in King's Landing for a little bit after her father gets offered the position of Hand of the King. Eventually has to go live there for a little while and she has to learn how to fight and she starts getting sword lessons from this, this French guy. I can't remember his name either. And she starts getting really good and the season ends with her in a really interesting place. So I'm like, yeah, I'd love to see more Arya start going forward. Jon Snow, I immediately connect with him because he feels like an underdog character because almost everybody in the show looks down at him for being a bastard. He feels kind of like Spider-Man. I mean, Spider-Man is always looked at as the regular guy he's looked at as the underdog but if you look at spider-man and his feats in the comics and shit spider-man he's He's, he's right up there with the big boys. And then we get to Ned Stark, and I feel like a show like this needs a character like Ned Stark. Because Stark is honorable. He's an honorable good dude, really. To his heart, to his core, he's a man of pride and honor. A show like this is going to have its fair share of scumbags. It's going to have its fair share of evil people, but you need the other balance to that. You need the other people who are kind of like, no, I'm going to plant my flag in the river and I'm not moving. You move. That's what Ned Stark is. He's actually kind of an awesome leader. He's an awesome husband. He's an awesome father, or at least he tries to be all those things. But the Lannisters, I am legitimately split right down the middle. There are two Lannisters that I despise with every molecule of my being. Bitch Lannister, who I will not refer to by her actual name. I think it's Cersei. I don't know what her name is. But either way, she's Bitch Lannister. She's the bitch of the show. Almost every show that's ever been written in existence has that one female character that's just the bitch. She's just the female character that you're not supposed to like. This chick is manipulative as fuck. She's pure evil. Not to mention she thinks fucking her brother is an okay thing. Kind of weird because that popped up in the first episode and I was just like, oh, okay, incest. Oh, okay, uh, what, 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 what am I watching here? It was kind of funny because later on in the season she tries to rationalize the shit when she's talking to Stark. She's just like, yeah, we, we came in. We were always together. We were in the womb together, so I should sit on his dick. <laughs> just like, wait, what, what, what? What, 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 what was that logic again? Oh, we came in this world together, so let's fuck? I, what, what, fuck wrong with this bitch? Then we get to Joffrey Lannister, and I, I just refuse to talk about him right now. I will talk about him later. The other Lannisters are kind of cool, if I'm being honest. You have Jamie Lannister. Sure, he has the personality of an arrogant douche, but... 
I also kind of respect him. He's at least honest about how arrogant he is, and he's actually kind of a badass fight. It was really cool seeing him and Ned Stark come to blows later on in the season. Then you have Tyron Lannister, played by Peter Dinklage. Everybody knows who Peter Dinklage is. Probably because of this show. I know, I'm new. Just leave me alone. Point is, this guy is really funny. He actually probably has some of the funniest bits of dialogue of anybody in the show. This guy's really smart. This guy knows what he is. He knows how to get what he wants. The season ends with him becoming the right hand of the king to Joffrey, so... Sure, I guess. If there is one thing I can single out about Game of Thrones Season 1, it is the writing. The writing for the characters is really well done. A show like this that is as big and as epic as this, you need good writing. You need good writing for the characters, you need good writing for the story. I would say that this show has that in spades. It does a great job at building the characters up, creating these character arcs that get you invested emotionally. And then it does a great job at taking all of these characters into really fascinating and interesting directions. Granted, not all of them will be the directions that you thought you wanted them to go. Then again, if every show went the direction that you thought they were going to go, then I guess the fans could write the show themselves, and there would be no point to anything that we see on TV. It's a great job at introducing the lore and really doing a great job with the world building. I gotta owe a lot of that to the production design as well as the music. You hear some stuff about White Walkers. You don't really know anything about them. I hear a lot about dragons. I still want to know more about them. Speaking of dragons, we have to talk about the dragon chick, and I, of course, am talking about Daenerys, queen of the dragons. I guess mother of the dragons is her more accurate name because I've been corrected on Twitter about this multiple times. Guys, I'm, I'm new. I'm trying here. Point is, Daenerys played by Amelia Clark. I mean, yeah, okay, she's fine as hell. Let's just get that shit out of the way. She is amazing to look at, and this show does have you look at her multiple times naked, which... Yeah, I'm all the way on board for that shit. Putting aside how great she looks naked, I would also say that she probably has the strongest character arc of anybody in season one. When she starts off in season one, she's kind of like a pawn for her brother, Veneris or Viserys, or whatever the fuck his name is. Pretty much just using her so that he can broker a marriage between her and Khal Drago so that he can get Khal Drago's army. Khal Drago, played by Jason Momoa, is the leader of this huge army of savages called the Targaryens or something. Veneris' brother wants this army so that he can take them across the sea so that he can reclaim King Landing, which I guess once upon a time was his. And she starts off the season kind of timid and kind of scared and kind of unsure of herself, but you see her gaining confidence by every episode until one episode she's just like, no, fuck this. I am the queen. I am Khaleesi, okay? I run this shit. I wear the pants in this family. And she doesn't actually say that, but it's essentially the same thing. And I thought that was really awesome. And then by the end of the season where she's just standing there naked, she's got dragons on her shoulder, I'm just like, yeah, okay, I, I would get down on all fours and I would praise that too. Unfortunately, with this show, I did the thing that I shouldn't have done that a lot of people warned me about going into the show, but I did it anyway, and that is... I got attached. People warned me when I first started watching the show, they were like, hey, bro, just, just don't get attached to anybody. I'm just like, what the fuck does that mean? They're like, hey, just... Don't get attached. Son of a bitch, I actually got attached. I actually started to care about some of these people, and oh my god, I'm never making that mistake again. Let's get to Joffrey. This little... Ooh, I, don't, I just don't have words strong enough to describe this motherfucker. We get to the point late in the season where Ned Stark has been manipulated by the Lannisters and pretty much everybody else in King's Landing, and they basically made him out to look like a traitor, and he's being tried for treason and death or whatever. Sansa Stark, his daughter, who's basically an annoying bitch for most of the season, if I'm gonna be honest, she actually goes to Joffrey and the rest of the royal council, and she's like, Yo, can we keep my father alive? He begs for a father's life. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's good, Sansa. That's what you should do. We get to the moment of truth in episode nine, and Joffrey's like, you know what, Sansa? I like the fact that she begged for her father's life. Kill this motherfucker! Cut his head off! He's a fucking traitor! I'm just like, what the? What? 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 Why? Why would you? What? Oh! I have forgotten that you could be that angry at a character in a situation in a TV show. I was seething. I was just, I was staring at the TV. I was just seething. I'm like, ooh, ooh, you, you little bitch. I cannot wait for you to die. Guys, in terms of performance, writing, music, direction, production design, world building, lore, Game of Thrones sucked me in season one. And it's not going to let me go, probably until the final season comes out next year. It started off a little bit slow, and there's still some unexplained things, like why the fuck did Brant keep dreaming about a fucking raven? That was never explained in this season. But yet and still, I'm looking forward to season two and what comes next. I know I'm late. Please forgive me. I am catching up, and I will be caught up by the time the final season rolls around. I actually really, really like Game of Thrones season one, and I'm going to give it a solid 
four out of five supers. Do not spoil anything for me in the comment section. I know how you people like to think. Without giving away any spoilers, tell me what your favorite season of Game of Thrones is in the comment section down below. Like and subscribe to the Super Fan Show. And as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel. And stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel. Peace.